people are talking about the so-called long COVID these days, what exactly does it mean? What are the causes and threats to health and how concerned should we be? Well, long COVID are prolonged symptoms of uh, the uh, coronavirus disease that we've been enduring. It usually lasts anywhere from weeks to months after the acute infection. Um, there's uh, some hypothesis as to what is causing uh, long COVID. Um, there's possibility that it might be due to uh, prolonged um, uh, in inflammation, perhaps. There are people who are at increased risk for long COVID, uh, those who were not vaccinated when they got the acute infection seem to be more at risk for it. Those with increased age, those with diabetes mellitus, those who had high levels of the virus in their blood or body during the acute infection, and those who had a reactivation of the Epstein-Barr virus, which is a different virus, but many people have had that infection. And if it gets reactivated, that seems to be a risk factor for long COVID as well. So mm -hmm. there's many reasons for, uh, for the development of long COVID. Mm. Uh, for the general population, like we people out in the street, you know, how concerned should we be? Well, if you've had COVID and you don't have any symptoms, you should not be concerned. If you've been fully vaccinated, uh, before you had the infection, you should not be concerned. If you have not been vaccinated, and if you are older and have diabetes and other risk factors, then that is a concern. So uh, you should strongly consider getting vaccinated. And I think you just mentioned that uh, those people with underlying conditions are those most likely groups to suffer from long COVID. Um, are you aware of any research in the United States or in China or anywhere else in the world to deal with this? Well, uh, the U.S. Congress uh, in 2021 appropriated $1.5 billion to the National Institutes of Health to uh, study long COVID. Uh, so they have started a program called RECOVER, and RECOVER stands for Researching COVID to Enhance Recovery. Um, so there are many centers that are starting uh, this program to uh, study long COVID. So that's in the United States. I don't know what programs there are in China. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the uh, pandemic. Uh, the, this COVID situation in the United States. Um, some public health and medical experts believe that the United States is now in the phase of endemic and uh, we have a good rate of vaccinations in the population, deaths and hospitalization numbers are dropping, people are going back to their offices. Can we say now that we are out of the woods? Well, if you are fully vaccinated and boosted, um, your risk of getting infection is lower, uh, particularly if you continue to uh, use uh, measures such as wearing a face mask on public transportation or in crowded venues. Um, but we have to remember that this is a global pandemic. And so there might be higher rates of vaccination in the United States, but as long as there are many other countries where there are people who are not vaccinated or under vaccinated, then the risk for developing new variants remains. And so new variants can develop in other countries and then spread uh, to the United States or to China. Uh, uh, again, it's, it's a global issue. It's not just one country. So uh, either everybody's vaccinated or, you know, we will continue to uh, deal with new waves of variants, unfortunately. Um, we are aware that the White House recently issued a new warning that the United States could potentially see 
100 million COVID-19 infections this fall and winter. What are your reactions and how true is this prediction? I think it's hard to predict um, these types of numbers and um, I, I urge caution that we uh, wait and see what happens at that time. Uh, again, urging people to get vaccinated and to wear face masks uh, in uh, settings where there might be increased risk for uh, viral transmission. So I, I don't generally like to focus on numbers because numbers can often be proven wrong. So, um, so let's just leave it at that. Hmm. So where, where did they get the number, like 100 million people likely infected? Well, uh, they could be doing mathematical modeling to estimate that. Um, that's usually how these numbers are uh, uh, developed. Um, however, with mathematical models, you have to make a lot of assumptions, uh, and sometimes your assumptions are incorrect. So, uh, again, I urge caution when using uh, predicted numbers. We, ju we just don't know. Yeah, my final question, actually, uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, pandemic in, in China. It looks like... Uh, Mankind perhaps must live with the COVID virus for a long time now, if not forever. But in China, the so-called uh, zero COVID policy with lockdowns is still being used in Shanghai currently and uh, uh, in many other uh, large metropolitans. Given the nature of this virus, do you think Beijing will eventually have to abandon this blunt method? Yes, I think at this point, um, expecting zero COVID is um, not the most realistic or uh, most humane strategy. People need to get on with their lives um, and locking people into their homes uh, with really no end in sight um, I, I think is not a, a prudent strategy. I think they uh, should urge people to get vaccinated, to wear face masks, and then to go on with their lives. Um, we've dealt with influenza year after year, decade after decade. We don't lock down from influenza, even though we lose tens of thousands of people each year. Now that's another issue, but uh, we have to recognize that uh, we have to continue living. And, um, and locking people down indefinitely um, is, I think, a, uh, is not the best strategy. Well, I think the most important thing is, uh, you know, we are all in this together uh, and uh, the weakest link anywhere is going to affect everybody everywhere. So we need to vaccinate the entire world. Uh, people need to live prudently and considerate, considerately to uh, their fellow uh, citizens in their, in their country or wherever they might be traveling. So we need to be kind and humane. Uh, we are all going through a tough time. This has been a very challenging several years for everybody. Many people have lost loved, loved ones uh, or have been very sick themselves. Uh, so it's, it's been a tough time of it. And, um, and, and I think having a, a, a humane response is extremely important. Long COVID is certainly a concern. I think long-term mental health is going to be a very important uh, concern uh, that um, that governments should uh, should address as well.